Looking cool in a Prius is hard to do, unless you live in California. But thankfully, Acura and Lexus have provided stylish hybrids so long as you're willing to pay a premium. So which is the better gussied up gas sipper? We borrowed a Lexus CT200H and an Acura ILX hybrid to find out. The Lexus CT200H is powered by a 1.8 liter four cylinder engine mated to a hybrid drivetrain. That makes 134 horsepower and 105 foot pounds of torque. If that sounds familiar, that's because this is the same hybrid drivetrain you'll find in a Toyota Prius. Fuel consumption is rated at 43 miles per gallon in the city, 40 on the highway, or an average of 42, and we're actually getting just around 41 miles per gallon. Pricing starts at $32,960 including delivery, but the F-Sport model that we have costs just over $38,300. Powering the ILX is a comparatively low-tech, mild hybrid system, which uses a 1.5-liter four-cylinder engine to make 111 horsepower and 127 pounds-feet of torque. A mild hybrid, the ILX cannot drive using solely its electric engine. Mated to the Integrated Motor Assist Mild Hybrid System is a CVT transmission, which is good for 39 miles per gallon in the city, 38 miles per gallon on the highway, and 38 miles per gallon combined. Overall, we're getting just about 40 miles per gallon. Now you're going to have to drop $29,795 in order to get into an ILX Hybrid, or $35,295 to get into our test car, which includes the tech package. Now I know that this is a hatchback and that that might turn some people off, but it really shouldn't because this is the better looking car of the two by far. Let me tell you why. For starters, you get standard 17 inch alloy wheels, which is bigger than the Acura. And I know that the white paint and the darkened alloys are specific to the F-Sport package as are the lower and upper mesh grills and the larger rear spoiler. But even without the F-Sport enhancements, which by the way, boil down to little more than improved looks, this car really is still the much more attractive of the two. For example, you get LED taillights and LED headlights are also optional. And in this segment, that really is just so in vogue right now. If you're looking for a car that tells the world that you're an environmentally conscious consumer, the ILX hybrid might not be for you. In fact, it's hard to tell that this is even a hybrid version of the ILX. There are these small badges on the fender and maybe the size of the badging just points to what kind of hybrid this really is. And it sets the expectation really low. Otherwise, we have a pretty premium looking, attractive car with smooth, clean lines and that big Acura shield up front. Welcome to the interior of the CT200H and real Japanese luxury. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the Acura, it just can't quite compete with the materials in this car. Let's start with the seats. For example, both the front buckets get power adjustment and my seat can raise and lower in the front to give you that extra snug bucket feeling. Not only that, but both of the front buckets are much better bolstered and in corners you really feel snug. And that brings me to my next point, the upholstery. Lexus will offer you two options for the seats, either their new Lux material, which of course is their imitation leather, or real genuine dead animal skins. Now, if it was my money, I probably would end up going for the new Lux. It feels fine and you're not going to be bothered by the difference. Uh, there are some things that I don't exactly love about the cabin. For example, the stereo head unit looks outdated and while it's easy to use, it just doesn't quite fit in with the rest. Spend a few minutes inside the Acura ILX and it becomes very difficult to see why Acura charges $35,000 for this car. I mean seriously, all I see here is a highly optioned out Honda Civic. The leather and trim here may look nice, but it doesn't really give you that premium feel that you expect in a car of this price tag. Compared to the Lexus, these seats just don't even give you that much support. And yes, you do get some premium features like power adjustable heated seats and dual zone climate control. That's to be expected at this price point. What you really want are high-tech features like adaptive cruise control, blind spot monitoring, and automatic headlight leveling. 
You don't get any of those in an ILX, while most of those are available in competing products. Take a look at the infotainment system in this car. Honestly, I've seen better in the Honda Accord. Compare this to the Lexus and it's not even a fair match. Lexus's remote touch system blows this thing away. And then you've got this really annoying feature that verbalizes every single selection that you make. Trust me, if you're going to be getting this car, turn off that feature immediately. And if you want to talk about attention to detail, Acura's driving coach is so poorly implemented. Compare this system to the one in the Honda Civic and you're going to be wondering why they even included it in the ILX altogether. It's this grainy, ugly green orb that glows and then fades away. And honestly, it's disgusting looking. Here's an interesting tidbit. This car actually shares its chassis with the Corolla and that makes this kind of an interesting comparison when you stop to think about the fact that the Acura shares its platform with the Civic. So these cars are actually sort of spiritual competitors aside from being more premium. Now I realize that we're driving with the F Sport package which means that we have a better suspension and consequently improved handling characteristics but you know it's just worth noting that really these cars actually are kind of similar. That is until you get into the practical aspect of actually driving the two. Um, like we said earlier, this car has a little bit more horsepower, but it's down on torque, which means that it won't feel quite as fast around town. But at the same time, this is actually quite a bit smoother to drive. And that's something I chalk up to the drive modes. So you get an eco mode, a normal mode, and a sport mode. And depending on where you sit, you'll either save fuel or you'll sit higher in the rev range and be able to get more of that horsepower to get a sportier response for around town driving. They all work very well and there are very decided differences between the three that give you a strong sense of being either in a fuel saving mode or in a sport mode or in the, the happy in between. If you've ever driven a hybrid before, you've probably experienced the fact that you have to treat them a little bit differently to achieve those stellar fuel numbers that they'll advertise. And it's worth noting that Toyota system does an especially good job of delivering that fuel economy without being especially coddled. I'm driving this thing in the city, in the sport mode, on the highway, and not being particularly gentle with the accelerator, and yet we're achieving pretty much right on par with the EPA estimates. Not only that, but there's another important thing to note about driving hybrids, and that's regenerative brakes. Now, some companies do a better job than others of really nailing a solid brake feeling that gives you confidence. Toyota does a splendid job of building a regenerative brake that doesn't feel particularly rubbery or strange to step on and gives you that sure-footed feeling while you're trying to slow the car down. Now the ILX shares a lot in common with the Honda Civic Hybrid and when you get on the road you'll feel that similarity immediately which is to say the ILX doesn't feel very premium. It takes a long time to get to highway speeds and if you plan on passing somebody while you're on the highway, it's going to take a long time, so you better plan well in advance. Now fuel economy on the ILX Hybrid is quite good. In fact, on some highway trips I was able to get as high as 52 miles per gallon. Like I said, the car is extremely slow, so what are you going to do but get good fuel economy? Now when it comes to braking, most hybrids tend to suffer from really inconsistent braking feel. Toyotas are known for having excellent brakes, and honestly, this Acura is that close to having perfect brakes in a hybrid. Now there's a little bit of differentiation between the way this car drives and the Honda Civic Hybrid. Namely, you have these paddle shifters. Now I know what you're thinking, how do paddle shifters help in a continuously variable transmission? Well, this car, when you click one of these paddle shifters, switches between one of seven preset gear ratios and simulates like you're in an actual automatic car. Now those paddle shifters do give it a bit of a sporty feel, but it's nowhere near as good as the way the Lexus feels. I'm worried about Acura. Blatantly rehashing Honda products with a fancy exterior trim isn't going to get them ahead in this segment. And the ILX Hybrid is a perfect example why. Now I think that we can both agree, Sammy, that the ILX Hybrid isn't really such a bad car, it's just that it can't quite compete with something like the CT200H. You know, it's more expensive, but it's worth every penny. You get a car that's going to deliver more consistent fuel mileage both in the city and on the highway and you get a more appealing package inside and out. 